<laughs> okay, hi, welcome back. Uh, we're talking about uh, project structure, how to organize your files, how to name your files in ways uh, that will make your life a little easier. So in the last video, I was talking about coming up with uh, file names that your uh, machine uh, will like. Now we need to talk about the human user, such as yourself. Uh, coming up with file names that are nice and kind to humans uh, is important as well. So let's, not surprisingly, humans like it when the file names that they see can tell you something about the contents of what's in those files. You want a description, you want something that is semantically meaningful, right? So it's 3 a.m., your project is due in the morning. Uh, are these the file names you really want to be staring at? 01.r, 02.r, notes.txt, 2b.r, notes.docx. This does not help. Right? You look at these and go, I don't know what these are. What was, why is two different to two B? What's different to one? Why are there two documents that are called notes? I got no idea what's going on here and I am going to cry. Like that's generally what happens to me when a project is due. So wouldn't it be better then if at 3 a.m. when you're questioning all of your life choices, the previous choices you have made gives you these files to work with. So you've got things here that have, okay, so we've got analysis 01, analysis 02, analysis 03, and each of those analysis files has this nice little uh, description afterwards. So analysis 01 is the descriptive statistics. Analysis 02 reports a pre-registered analysis that you are going to do. Notes. 01, uh, realizing the problem is obviously something where you've written up notes to yourself about what went wrong in your earlier analyses. So in analysis 3, which follows on from notes 1, you've departed from whatever your original analysis plan is. And then you can see here in notes 02, you've got a tentative write-up of everything. So you can see where you're up to and what the history of your project has been just by looking at the file names. You know where you are, you don't have to reorient, and really, most importantly, you don't get that moment of terror and despair that you feel every single time you open your computer and you go, oh God, no, what was I, what, what, no, that's it, I'm done, right? You lose a lot of time uh, just because you stare at these old file names and you're just going, I can't, I can't deal with this this is too much um, and you can't even bring yourself to get started. So having something that's descriptive is a form of kindness to uh, future you. Take it seriously because future you is probably stressed, uh, rushed, tired, has forgotten everything about what this project was about um, and really, really, really needs you to be nice. So. Um, Give yourself good descriptions that will help you bootstrap your way back into the project when you pick it up later on. So the principle, or the way that we do this, uh, is to kind of pick up a... Um, I think the original name for this is called like semantic versioning or something. I, I forget. Um, it's what you use in blog posts, right? It's called a slug. So it's this thing at the end of the file name um, that is separated, like, is, um, that is just a description that you chuck on at the end of what your um, document is. So that, that part there is called the slug. Um, include slugs in your file, file names. These should be concise, meaningful descriptions. Don't make them too long, otherwise, you know, you end up with this big wall of text inside the file name. And in any case, there are limits to how long a file name is allowed to be, so don't go crazy. Um, just have it something that gives you the bare minimum of the gist of what this document is about. And so you usually append that, the slug, to the end of the file name like this. So the nice thing um, about uh, that, sorry, <laughs> I forgot <laughs> that I have a section slide here. Okay. Um, these two first principles of 
having names that machines like and having names that humans uh, like play together with each other really well and kind of give you um, the ability to easily sort and search through your files. So I'm going to expand a little bit about, about um, sorting and searching because it's uh, super helpful to think about this kind of stuff. Okay, so sometimes when you're writing files, let's say, um, you are uh, you want the file name to include the date on which you last like you created the file, let's say, right? And there's all sorts of reasons you might want to do that. Like um, it's generally a more robust thing than um, being able to look at you know the date modified thing on your computer or whatever. It just it's it's there in the file name. It's a nice way of telling you. Um, which period of time this document corresponds to. But how you write down a date matters. So if I go 1 April 2012 um, and 12 Jan 2012, all of these, these files are not going to automatically search, uh, sort into chronicle, chronological order. On your computer, um, they're going to, so they're basically going to um, sort in lexicographic ordering or but basically alphabetical ordering but also think about numbers so you've got a number so the number one comes first so all of the dates that start with the number one appear first in the listing doesn't matter what year they were in like the year because that's the last thing in the in the date that doesn't actually make any contribution to how the files get sorted so the alphabetical ordering of these dates, as it would appear on your computer, is not going to correspond to the chronological ordering of the dates themselves. Um, and, you know, worse, they're like different lengths and things. So April, we've got the full April, but then I've reduced January to three letters. That's, that's all bad. Um, don't do any of that. What we should do instead is uh, always stick to numeric formatted dates and do them in a specific ordering. That is, always do uh, a four letter year, um, then hyphen, then a two letter month, hyphen, then a two letter day. So the default uh, sorting of these will always be in chronological ordering. So 2009 was the first year. So those files that were in 2009 appear up the top of the list. January is the first month, so it comes before December, which is the 12th month, and so on. And you can see that the, the 2012 um, uh, documents um, come later on in the list. So this will make sure that the dates are organized and automatically sorted in an order that makes it easy for you to find what you're looking for. And just to give it its technical name, this is the ISO 8601 standard. Um, as almost anyone who does you know, computer programming will start yelling at you if you spend enough time doing at it, this is usually the best way to name, uh, name to place dates in files. Um, just use this as your default way of doing dates. There's a really nice thing that you get uh, when you include both the date and the slugs that are introduced in the semantics thing. So if we have, if we place dates first like in your file names, this will ensure that when it appears on your computer, um, the list of files uh, are going to appear in chronological order, right? So 2009 first, then another two, then December 2009 and so on. So the having the chronology or the date first uh, is how your computer is going to order those files. And then if you have the slugs uh, coming afterwards, and if those things are meaningful, they tell you a story. So here what we've got is, oh, okay, I can just look at these files in their default ordering and I know what happened. I first did my original analysis, then I made some minor changes to the original, then I did an analysis at a two-year follow-up, so that's quite a bit of time later, I made some minor changes after that when I um, 
did the follow-up and then finally I've got an analysis that combines my original and follow-up. So you've got basically the file names become a kind of a history, a log, um, and you can read it as a story. It tells you what your project what's happened in your project and you don't have to open anything you can just read the story um, the number of times that I have uh, been saved by this is smaller than I want it to be because I keep forgetting to do it but when I do it um, it comes back later on and it is worth its weight in gold because you can you can just see the whole history of your project right there um, if you don't need dates to or so over here I've been using dates as a way of ordering files um, that's sometimes useful but often that's not the way that you want to do it like say you're writing a book right and what you actually want is chapters or something right you, you just you just want to create the order yourself the easiest way to do that is just using numbers as a prefix so if you've got zero one as the um, thing that will be the first number zero two comes next um, 0, 03 is after that and eventually like 19, 20, 21 like the the files will sort themselves into the appropriate order. An important thing is to note that to notice um, here is when I have done this like I didn't put one preface I put 01. What you want to do is left pad your numbers with additional zeros so that all of the numbers are the same length. This matters for sorting purposes. So if you know that, um, okay, look, I'm writing a book. It's not going to have more than, it, it could have more than 10 chapters, um, but it's not going to have more than 99. So I'm going to use a two digit uh, code like 01, 02, 03, etc. Um, if on the other hand, you know, you've got something that could have, uh, you know, um, hundreds of files then you can use three digit codes um, but basically always remember to include all the leading zeros make sure that they're always the exact same number of digits um, as a general rule like um, i should say often people will ask me well, can i just use letters for that and you can um, generally uh, doing things in alphabetical order is good but something to keep in mind is that alphabetical orders are slightly dependent on the uh, location like on the um, what where your computer thinks it is from the per from a linguistic point of view so whatever language your computer is expecting for its locale changes the alphabetical order different languages actually have characters in different orders so that can make a difference um, I don't know how much of a big deal that is, but generally I think um, having the numbers at the front is nice. Is it just a clear way of making sure that things end up in the order that you want? Um, a final, um, a, a th another thing that uh, comes from organizing your files in this way is making sure you include keywords. So. You might argue that, um, okay, well, let's go back to our reading list example, right? For, um, if everybody, if everybody knows that Shakespeare wrote Romeo and Juliet, why does my file name really have to include Shakespeare? Like, isn't that just implied by Romeo and Juliet? I don't need to include the author. Same thing, everybody, everybody knows that Sylvia Plath wrote The Bell Jar, so really can I, why do I need the author field? The answer for that is um, this kind of redundancy um, is super useful later on when you want to search for your files. You're thinking, oh, um, gosh, didn't we do a bunch of Shakespeare things? I know, I should go and look for that. What, um, Apparently the example I gave was, oh, just pull out all my stuff about Plath. So I'll go onto my computer, like if I'm on a Mac, I'll open up Spotlight or I'll search. You know, there's usually a search uh, um, button on your, uh, here, I'm on Ubuntu. There's a little search uh, button, you know, little thing that I can click to, um, to search through the files. So if I just search for the word Plath, it's going to bring up these two files. 
If on the other hand I say, oh no, I don't need the original text. All I want is just the notes that I wrote. So I want to search for all the files that include the keyword notes. And if I type that in as my search, I'll get these as my results. So the point is here, a little bit of redundancy um, buys you a lot later on when you need to search. So do, you know, in this example, including the author, uh, Shakespeare is useful, um, including the distinction between the things that were the readings and the things that were the notes that you took is also useful. This will help you search through your files later. Okay, so that's basically everything I wanted to say about names. So I'm going to stop uh, uh, this recording here. Um, and in the next uh, one, I'm going to start talking about uh, project structure.